How's it going everyone? This is Mitchell Mander here, and when Pokemon Journeys was first announced in late September of 2019, we found out that the premise of this new series would be Ash and his new companion Go would be traveling across all the currently known Pokemon regions, at least up through Generation 8. And because of this reason, with Ash going back to prior regions that he's traveled through, a lot of us in the community, including myself, wondered, could Ash actually run into his old companions? Could he run into his old rivals? Could he meet some of the old gym leaders he battled in the previous series? And at first, some of us weren't sure if this was going to happen, but now with Ash battling Karina in episode 25 of Pokemon Journeys, it actually adds a huge possibility to a lot of older characters returning to the series. So the purpose of this video for me is going to be telling you guys my top five picks for who I want to see returning to the Pokemon Journey series and why. Anyways, if you disagree with this list, I'd like to see your top five characters in the comment section down below. Anyways, if you like this type of video, be sure to like and subscribe as I cover this series from time to time. <laughs> Anyways, on to the video. Number five. Brandon. Ah yes, Brandon the Frontier Brain. The strongest among the Frontier Brains when Ash traveled back to Kanto at the end of Advanced Generation and faced off against the Frontier Brains, eventually defeating Brandon. And speaking of that, it took Ash actually three attempts to defeat Brandon before he actually won the Battle Frontier Challenge. And for that reason, I want to see this guy return. I believe his last appearance was in Diamond and Pearl episode 129, so it's been over 10 years since we've seen this guy. So yeah, I think it's time for him to return. And seeing as anyone can enter the Pokemon World Championships, I can see Brandon being a contender for the Pokemon World Championships. I actually think this dude has a really high chance of returning for that reason. Not only would we get to see an amazing rematch between Ash and Brandon, but we could see how his team has changed since he last appeared in the anime. In addition to that, we also have new Regis that are coming with the new Sword and Shield DLC next month. So this could be a good way of showcasing these new Regis in the anime. Also, it would be nice to see if Snowpoint Temple has been rebuilt since Brandon last appeared. And speaking of that, I think this is where we would see a potential rematch between the two taking place. That'd be freaking awesome. It'd be cool to see how things have changed since Diamond and Pearl. Maybe Brandon will acknowledge Ash a little bit more and that he's grown up quite a bit since the last time they met as a trainer and as a person. And for all we know, Regigigas might actually be part of his team now. Can you imagine Ash versus a team of Regis? That'd be freaking insane. But even if it's just for one episode, it'd be nice to see how things have been going with Brandon these days. Number four. Serena. Okay, <laughs> before I get a ton of dislikes on this video and hundreds of comments complaining about why Serena isn't number one in this list, just hear me out. I do want to see Serena return. I do like her a lot. And while Amore Shipping is wholesome content in itself, and she had a very good story arc, which is arguably one of the best in the entire Pokemon anime, I mainly want to see how she's been doing since she left for Hoenn at the end of X, Y, and Z. Like, has she been successful with any of her Pokemon contests? Has she met someone like May or Dawn yet? Does she even like Pokemon contests? And has she traveled to multiple different regions, like outside of Hoenn? Kind of like what Ash and Go are doing. These are all questions I currently have. And speaking of May and Dawn, I would like to see those two again, but unlike these two, Serena didn't return in the next series for a cameo. As in, after X, Y, and Z, Serena didn't return in Sun and Moon for even a single cameo, <laughs> which was quite disappointing. And the same could be said about Iris, but unlike Iris, Serena didn't even get a special episode. That went to Clement and Bonnie, while the other special episode for X, Y, and Z, besides the Mega Evolution specials, was a random special with characters from the past that we don't even care about and was pretty terrible in my opinion. And I'm still pretty upset that we never got a Serena special. Okay, rant aside, <coughs> I just want to know how this girl is doing. And if she does return, I can see her actually returning for two episodes. And in the premise of those episodes, I can see Ash and Go either heading to Hoenn or a region that Serena is currently doing contests in. And that's how I see Ash and Serena reuniting in the series. 
we can get the return of a more shipping hints, which will satisfy some shippers out there. In fact, that's going to satisfy a lot of people. And then I can see her joining a Ash and Go for a bit, and maybe she watches one of Ash's battles in the Pokemon World Championships. And maybe just like the battle with Viola, Serena inspires Ash yet again, and he comes out on top of his battle. Like, say he's struggling, and suddenly he sees Serena, and he becomes inspired again. Maybe it's something she said earlier in the episode, and boom, Ash wins his battle. Also, maybe she can meet Koharu and tell our queen to just be less cold towards Ash and Go. Maybe she could talk about how Ash has inspired her to work towards her own goals, and this is what causes Koharu to become friendlier to Ash. Just a thought. But, so, uh, Serena DeCanto, anyone? Number three. Paul. Oh boy, here we go. I bet you all were wondering if Paul would actually show up on this list. And of course he's going to show up on this list. I can't leave Paul out. I think it's safe to say that we all want to see a rematch between Ash and Paul. One of the, hands down, one of the best battles in the Pokemon anime. It's second to Ash versus Kukui, in my opinion. But it's still up there. It's still a top tier battle in the anime. And not only that, but maybe we could see if Paul has changed as a person and as a trainer since his match with Ash. Since it seemed at the end of their match in the Sinnoh League, it seemed like at, or Paul actually was starting to grow up a little bit and mature and kind of grow out of his cold personality. So I'm interested to see how Paul has changed since their battle and if he's changed his methods since then. And if he does retain some of his old personality, I can see him acting a little cold towards Go and maybe not acknowledging him since Go is still not really that strong of a trainer when it comes to battling right now. He's still kind of new to all this. So I could see him being quite cold to this kid. And maybe it's something that would be actually some good development for Go. Maybe he kind of just gets angry and frustrated with Paul and beats himself up and he has to try and prove himself to Paul in some, some way or another. And I could see this be, being some very interesting development for Go and maybe he gains some confidence in his own abilities. Now back in Diamond and Pearl, it was mentioned that there was a Champions League that takes place after a trainer wins a Pokemon League conference. Cynthia mentioned that she expects Ash and Paul to face off again in this Champions League one day. Well, seeing as this hasn't been brought up since the end of Diamond and Pearl, I can see this return of Paul in Pokemon Journeys being an opportunity to take the place of their rematch in the Champions League. The Pokemon World Championships is a much more interesting concept anyways, in my opinion. So this would make for a much more interesting rematch as a result. We get to see how far up Paul is in the ranks, where he compares against Ash, and we get to see what happens when they face one another. Will Ash win and move up, or will Paul be the one that moves up? And we get to see how much they've changed, improved, and grown since their last encounter in the Sinnoh League through their battle in the Pokemon World Championships. Also, we could see Paul face off against someone in the Pokemon World Championships at the same time. Maybe Ash and Go end up watching one of their one of his matches. And it could be against someone powerful, like Cynthia. And speaking of Cynthia, number two. Cynthia. Ah uh, yes, Cynthia. The best champion in Pokemon. I know Leon's giving her a run for her money, but I still consider Cynthia to be the best champion in the Pokemon series, both games and anime. And seeing as Lance made an appearance in the Pokemon Journey series, it would be a crime if Cynthia didn't show up at all. And good lord, can you imagine Ash vs. Cynthia in the Pokemon World Championships? That would be super hype, but I can't see Ash winning right away. I can see this being one of those times where Ash takes an L right away. And I can see this being a two-parter, where Ash loses in the first episode, possibly right away, does some training, and then comes back in the next episode and goes right down to the wire and just edges out victory against Cynthia. I can see this being one of the most difficult battles Ash has to go through in order to get to Leon, along with Ryan. And man, when Ash actually defeats Cynthia, if she does show up, and Ash actually beats her, you bet this is going to trend worldwide. This is going to be one of the biggest events in the entire Pokemon series. I mean, if Ash actually has captures alone trend on Twitter, this is going to be huge. Possibly as big or even bigger than his Alola League win. 
Like this is gonna be huge. Like that's a major milestone in Ash's career as a Pokemon trainer. I mean, the winning the Lola League itself was a big deal, but beating Cynthia, good lord, that would be crazy. But besides this battle, I want her to not only acknowledge Ash's growth since they last met, but also recognize him as a fellow champion, as our boy Ash is a Alola's champion. But seriously, we need someone to at least acknowledge Ash as a champion. And why not let the best champion in the Pokemon series acknowledge Ash as a champion himself? Also, Cynthia's Bay. So yeah, can we please get her to come back, please? So I wanted to give an honorable mention to Alon. <laughs> oh boy, this guy. Now, I don't hate Alon personally, but his victory over Ash in the Chaos League still rubs me the wrong way to this day. I mean, I get that Alon is a very strong and capable trainer on his own. I mean, hell. He defeated 10 Mega Evolved Pokemon in a row, including one owned by an Elite Four member. So yeah, he's a very strong dude. But you build up Ash throughout X, Y, and X, Y, and Z, and Greninja as well, who, by the way, gets his own form on, that is on par with a Mega Evolved Pokemon in Ash Greninja. And it loses like that to Alon? Yeah, no, I'm not buying it. Now, while the Alola League somewhat makes up for this loss, I just want Ash to beat this guy, please. He didn't get a single victory against this guy. Like, come on. Can we just have Ash beat this guy? And why not let it happen in the Pokemon World Championships? I like to see a battle that's on par with their final clash in the Kalos League. It was very beautifully animated, and this time we need Ash to come out on top. And if Ash moves up big time in the Pokemon World Championships, then I would consider his loss to Alon the Kalos League redeemed. Anyways, on to the number one spot. Number one. Tracy Sketchit. Yes, indeed. Tracy, the greatest companion of Ashes. The character that replaced Brock and made the series way better as a result. And the best character in the series, no doubt. The character that spent the most time with Ash, for sure. He fulfilled his own dream of becoming Professor Oak's assistant to the point where he actually left him off screen and he's disappeared. As it's clear that he's surpassed Oak in every single way in his research skills. What a frickin' Chad. Oh, wait a minute, what the hell is this script? Okay, sorry about that everyone. Had some technical difficulties with the script. All right, the real number one is actually, wait a second, Gary Oak, what? <laughs> Gary Oak? Why the hell is he above Paul and Serena on this list? This is an absolute outrage, Mitchell Mander. I am unsubbing from your channel. Shame on you. Paul and Serena should be way above Gary Oak on this list. What the hell were you thinking? <laughs> okay, dramatic jokes aside, just hear me out here. Now, I will say that Paul is definitely my favorite rival of Ashes. However, Gary was the very first rival. He was the rival that pretty much set the standard for every single rival that followed him including Paul. So you could say that uh, Paul was filling Gary's shoes as Gary had, was no longer a trainer at that point. And much like Brandon, Gary has also been absent in the series for a very lengthy amount of time. Besides a few cameos he made in Best Wishes, which were really not cameos, he didn't actually physically appear in the series, just in flashbacks and an ending. Yeah, it's been over 10 years since Gary has been in the series, but I consider him to be a more important character to Ash's development compared to Brandon. Sure, Ash winning the Frontier Brain Challenge was a big deal, but Gary was Ash's very first rival. He appeared in the very first episode, so I consider him to be a more significant character in Ash's development over time compared to Brandon. But the main point is, Gary has been absent in the series for a long time. I kind of want to know what he's been up to all this time. I know he's a Pokemon researcher now, and he's probably been traveling around, maybe working with various professors in different regions, but I'd like to see him again and see what he's up to. It'd be interesting if he runs into Ash and Go when they're on their own research trips, which speaking of which, I think it, I wonder how he would react if he found out that Ash was a research fellow now. I think he'd find it to be pretty interesting and also very ironic at the same time, considering they're both researchers now. Though Ash's research fellow job is a little different than Gary's. 
Now, I don't know if Gary would be part of the Pokemon World Championship since he's no longer a trainer at this point. He is still a very capable trainer in of his own, even if he has given up being a trainer. But if he doesn't participate, I could at least see him acknowledging Ash's growth since they started their journeys respectively. Maybe a little nice flashback scene of them starting their journeys all the way up to their battle in the Johto League. That'd actually be really cool, like a 30 second clip in an episode. We could see Ash's growth as a trainer through Gary's eyes, as well as Gary's changing and maturing for the better and following in his grandfather's footsteps. I think that'd be really cool to see. It'd be a very wholesome episode with the first rival that Ash has ever had. And that is why Gary Oak is the number one character I want to see return in the Pokemon Journey series. So that's all I got for this video. Those were my top five choices for who I want to see return in the Pokemon Journey series. So in the comment section down below, I want to hear your top five choices. No more than five. Give me your top five characters you want to see return in the Pokemon Journey series, and maybe a short reason why. I'd like to hear your thoughts, so post your thoughts in the comment section down below. Be sure to like and subscribe, and I will talk to you guys later. Stay safe out there, everyone, and have a great day.